It is my privilege to present New Zealand's fifth wellbeing budget. As in each of these budgets, we have taken into account the wellbeing of our people, the strength of our communities, the health of our environment, alongside the performance of our economy and finances. In doing so, we are striking a balance between supporting our people now with the pressure of cost of living and investing in future jobs and economic security. The backdrop to Budget 2023 is challenging. It is hard to remember a time in New Zealand's history where there have been so many challenges to our economic, environmental and social systems in such a short period of time. Individuals, families, businesses and communities are feeling the impact of global economic and political turbulence, high inflation, the lingering hangover of the COVID emergency and the impacts of climate change through more frequent and intense weather events. Cost of living pressures are being felt across our communities. Budget 2023 responds to those pressures in a targeted and responsible way, building on what we have done over recent years and in a way that will not exacerbate inflation. There is a particular focus on parents and young families including the expansion of 20 hours ECE support to two-year-olds. <laughs> Free public transport for children and half price for under 25s and the, and the scrapping of the $5 prescription charge for all New Zealanders. Mr Speaker, we are also making a significant commitment to support the recovery and rebuild of those regions affected by severe weather events earlier in the year. This was an unwelcome and unplanned for series of events, but our careful financial management and the reprioritisation programme led by the Prime Minister has allowed us to reallocate resources and meet the Government's future contributions through the budget allowances. We are on track to return to surplus within the forecast period. Our net debt will peak at 22% of GDP, well below the ceiling set and our fiscal rules. And inflation is forecast to return to around 3% by the end of 2024. Budget 2023 also looks ahead. We are very much focused on doing the basics well, with significant investment in education, health and housing. These areas are the bedrock of opportunity for each and every New Zealander. At the same time, we are improving the resilience of New Zealand's critical infrastructure and investing in a more productive, higher wage, lower emissions economy, including through research and technology. The budget strikes the critical balance between the support required today and the investment needs of the future. We have carefully cut our cloth as the emergency spending in response to COVID activities declines and we move to a more fiscally sustainable path. Mr Speaker, New Zealand has withstood many shocks in recent memory and our well-being has generally held up well. However, absorbing these shocks has affected our wealth and we need to rebuild our resilience to the future challenges we know will come. The Treasury's first wellbeing report to Tai Waiora provided a broad perspective on the range of things that matter for wellbeing. It highlighted that New Zealand is a good place to live in many ways, and that many aspects of our life have improved over the past 20 years. We enjoy cleaner air, longer life expectancy and higher incomes. However, New Zealand faces wellbeing challenges, particularly around mental wellbeing, education and housing quality and affordability. And these challenges are on average felt more strongly by our younger people. These issues are long-standing and they have not lost their urgency and they continue to be reflected in our wellbeing objectives. We are in a good position to meet these challenges. The New Zealand economy emerged from COVID-19 well, with modest growth anticipated over 2023. Our economic recovery from COVID is in the top 10 of OECD nations. At 3.4%, the household labour force survey measure of unemployment is currently equal or lower than any period prior to 2020. New Zealand continues to have some of the lowest public debt in the world, and Budget 2023 is another step in the direction of bringing core crown expenses as a percentage of GDP back towards pre-pandemic levels. We remain committed to returning the Obergale to surplus within the forecast period and keeping net debt below the ceiling of 30% of GDP. Mr Speaker, in the context of our wellbeing approach, the Government remains committed to improving child wellbeing. The latest figures released by Stats New Zealand show that eight out of nine of the child poverty measures have seen a significant reduction since the baseline year of 2018. 
Over the last two years, child poverty rates on the measures we have comparable data for are the lowest they have been since we started measuring, and rates have almost halved on two of them. This is a testament to the comprehensive package of investments that we have put in place to support families over several years and are continuing to do so in Budget 2020. Well, there